Hello everyone, I am Assistant Pastor Brett Pazder, and today we will be going through the Gospel Letter. Um, it's this book, if you have it, the Gospel Letter, and it's a set of messages, 1 through 10. And today we're going to start with Gospel Letter 1. And Gospel Letter 1 is, Why are people unhappy? So let's look at a verse to start. It's Romans 3, 23. Um, I'll read that for us. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the question that we're looking at today is, why are people unhappy? Why are people unhappy? And this doesn't mean people are never happy. Of course, people have times of happiness. You know, if something good happens to you, you're happy, you have joy. Um, let's say I get a lot of money, or you know, I get a promotion, or a raise, or you, know, you get a good grade in school. Of course those things make you feel happy. Um, but the question that we're looking at today is, why are people fundamentally unhappy? And kind of to demonstrate that, um, back a few years ago, I was flying from Korea to America. And on that flight, I was sitting next to a gentleman. Um, he was an older gentleman. He was a businessman. And during that flight, you know, we, we started talking for a while. And about halfway through our conversation, he stopped me. And he stopped me, and he looked at me, and he said, you're a happy person. And I was kind of taken aback. And I was like, well, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm happy. Isn't that, isn't that you know, kind of normal? And he said, no. You know, he said, that's actually a rare thing. You know, in all his years and all of his experience, you know, he rarely finds people that are genuinely happy. And that's the question that we're looking at today. You know, why is it that people are fundamentally unhappy? You know, why is it that you know, even though they're trying to seek happiness through different things, through success, through, through making money, or through having a lot of friends around them, or all these different things, why is it that they are still unhappy? And on top of this, all these problems come into their lives. Financial problems, problems at work, problems within their families. It is because of all these things, people are continuously in this state of unhappiness. So why are people unhappy? The reason? People are separated from God. People are separated from God, and that is why they are unhappy. In fact, they are ignorant of God. They are ignorant of God. They are ignorant of God's will for them. They don't even know God exists. And for them, a lot of them, they're lost. They're just wandering around in this world, looking for hope, looking for an answer, and they cannot find it. It is also because people are in a state of sin. It says in Romans 3.10 that no one is righteous, not even one. You know, everyone has this sin that causes them to be separated from God. And because of this, they suffer. They face all kinds of suffering. And they have mental problems. They have stress, anxiety. And these things lead to depression and worse and worse problems. And these things can take the form of physical problems as well. Um, they could face disease or, or fights within their family. You know, just to know the state of the world by looking at the news, you could see how we are suffering. There's so many problems, so many terrible situations that we face. And it is because ultimately we are rooted, uh, separated from God. And the thing is people, they always look at the physical problems. They always look at the physical things, and they try to solve those. But the reason is, it's a spiritual problem. The root is not that physical thing. It is a spiritual thing. And that's why they continue to stay in that state of suffering and problems. And there are some people, though, they try to find an answer through religion. So they attend church diligently, or they become a Buddhist and start 
you know, doing some type of meditation. But ultimately, these things, they only give a temporary peace. You know, they don't give you true peace. So people continue to remain in that fundamental state of unhappiness. So to find the solution to the problem, we need to know the problem accurately. And the same thing goes, you know, if you have a disease, of course that disease, it can have different symptoms. You know, I could have a sore throat or a headache or maybe a rash on my arm. But to solve that, you know, you don't give someone a cough drop. To solve that, you don't give someone aspirin. You don't just put a bandage over the rash and say they're going to be okay. Now, that doesn't solve the problem. Because to solve that problem, to cure it, you need to know it accurately. And so to know the accurate problem of why we're separated from God, we need to go back to the beginning. So when did this suffering actually begin? When did this begin? And so we go back to the start of time. At the start of time, God created everything. He created the universe. He created the world. He created the plants and the animals. And he also created mankind. He created Adam and Eve. And after he created them, he said, it is good. And his creation was good. It was meant to be good. But then something happened. And this is the start of all of our problems. This is the root problem. We can find it in the Bible in Genesis 3, verses 1 to 6. Adam and Eve, they were full of pride. They wanted to be God themselves. And so ultimately, they disobeyed God's word. And so we call that original sin. Original sin is when mankind first sinned. And this is carried down generation to generation to generation. But because of that sin, there is a result. Because Adam and Eve sinned, we see in Genesis 3, verses 16 to 19, that mankind became cursed. That is why we face the suffering that we do today. Because we are cursed, we suffer separated from God. You know, God had a design for us when he first made us. When he first made mankind, he created us to be in a relationship with him. And in a way, it's like a fish that's designed to live in the water. In the water, it's good, it's happy, it's alive. But if you take that fish out of water, what happens to it? A fish taken out of water and put on the land, it just flops around, suffering, until it eventually dies. And that's the way we live our lives. You know, taken out of a relationship with God, we're just flapping around, we're suffering, struggling to live, you know, struggling to survive in this world. And eventually we die. And that's not the way God designed us to be. He designed us to be in a relationship with Him. So how long will this suffering last? This suffering it continues now. Like I said, because of this sin, the root problem of mankind, it's like a seed. It's a seed of sin, and it's carried on from generation to generation to generation. And that's why even today, we are born into this sin. So even now, mankind faces the same suffering, the same curses. And the thing is, it will continue in the future as well. It will continue on after us as well. And also, even though we try to solve this through different forms and through different methods, things end up getting worse. And if you look at technology and how we've advanced over the years, it seems like as we advance, things are getting better. You know, a lot of people think that we're actually heading towards some type of utopia, where when we advance scientifically enough through technology, things will be perfect eventually, or we're evolving to that point. But the reality is, that we're not. The reality is that as technology advances, some of our physical problems may be taken care of. You know, we're supposed to have more time because of technology. But in fact, things are actually getting worse. You know, families are becoming more isolated. 
people are spending more time with these electronic devices than they are with their families. Families are breaking down, people are having more mental problems, more stress, anxiety, and depression. These things are all on the rise. And people a lot of times are seeking you know, to find the, a solution to this problem, so they, they also look to different religions, like, like meditation. But ultimately, this leaves them more and more empty. You know, as they advance, things are not getting better. Things are getting worse. And now we're going to look at number four, which is why doesn't this unhappiness go away? Why doesn't this unhappiness go away? And it is because we have an enemy working against us. We have something aiding in our unhappiness. And that person is called Satan or the devil. It is the adversary of God. And he brings us more and more unhappiness because his role is to separate us from God and to continue leading us down paths of destruction. And he also is not alone, but he has evil spirits, a legion of evil spirits that also aid him in, in corrupting us and destroying us and bringing us unhappiness. So when did this enemy appear? This enemy is an angel. And originally, he was in heaven with God. But because of his pride, he became corrupt. He wanted to sit on the throne of God. He wanted to be God and be worshipped as God. And because of that, there was a war in heaven. And he was cast down into the kingdom of air, which is earth. And there he roams around looking for people to destroy. He is a fallen angel. So number five, what happens if we remain ignorant of God, if we remain in this way? If we remain this way, ignorant of God, spiritual problems will continue to come. We will continue to suffer continue to suffer, but we won't know the true reason why. We will have no happiness. We will have no peace. We will continue to face physical suffering and mental suffering. And then our destiny is ultimately hell. Because hell is a place where we are eternally separated from God. And if you don't find and if you don't meet with God in this lifetime, that is your destiny. So now, we're looking for a solution to this problem. And people look in this world for different things to solve it. But all of the things in this world to solve it are all temporary, in that you only have temporary peace through the things in this world. The things that you find peace in, they're very worldly. They're very physical. They are only for pleasure. And the thing about pleasure is it always leaves you more empty and more worse off than you started. You know, a lot of people, they'll turn to alcohol or drugs. You know, they'll turn, at, they'll turn to it first, you know, try to, to try to bring some happiness to their lives, to celebrate. And so they'll get drunk and they'll party some night and they'll have a good time. But the next morning, they feel terrible. They feel awful. And they don't feel good in again until they have another drink or until the next party. And that becomes a cycle where they're always looking towards the next party, the next fun time, the next time where they could get drunk. And the same goes with, with drugs. You, know, you taste that drug and you feel so good in that moment, that pleasure. But then when it's over, 
it feels so empty and you feel like you can't live without it. And so that's why be people become addicted to these things. They become addicted to alcohol. They become addicted to drugs because they want to always remain at that high. But they can't without that drug. And so it becomes a cycle of they have the drug, they don't have it, they suffer. They have the drug, they don't have it, they suffer. It's just Satan's way of leading us into more and more destruction. And so they ultimately are worse off and they have even more unhappiness in the end. So in conclusion, we asked the question today, why are people unhappy? And the reason people are unhappy is because they are separated from God. They are separated from God and they're in this state of suffering, separated from God. And what they don't see is this is not a physical problem, but it is a spiritual problem that you have to solve. And it began at the start of time. This is the root problem, original sin. So you have to solve this problem if you want to be happy. And this continues on today, and it will continue to get worse in the future. And we also have this enemy working against us, Satan. And if we remain this way, we will remain in a state of unhappiness, always trying to find happiness, but never finding it. And everything in this world is always temporary. But we have a hope. And that hope is given by God. That hope is in Christ Jesus. And that is why Christ Jesus, he said himself in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all those weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Because it's only with Christ that you can have true peace. So at this time, let's pray as we hold on to this message. Um, dear Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to, to go through your word together. We thank you, Father God, for guiding us through your Holy Spirit. And we pray, Father God, that all these people that are stuck, separated from God, and stuck in their unhappiness, Father God, we pray that you will open their eyes that they will be able to see the true problem, the spiritual problem, and that that will lead them to seek you, God. We pray, Father God, that they will discover their need for Christ and that they will be saved. We thank you for this time, and we pray all these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen.